I know that sometimes baffles people. The Every Vegan Society is a social action group. We hold vegan potlucks and also dinners in local restaurants and fundraisers and work parties for animal for local animal sanctuaries. Uh, so places where animals go when they're when they're rescued from uh, the uh, farm industries, etc. Um, we also provide assistance and support for vegans and others who are transitioning to um, or considering a vegan lifestyle. Koala, Kishore Ontario Animal Liberation Alliance, is a network of animal liberation activists in Kitchener Waterloo. We fight against animal exploitation through direct action and public outreach and education. So sometimes we give out vegan food at Ripfest um, and other events uh, downtown and such just to, to get people thinking. Um, and we attend demonstrations to help people to think about um, and to dissuade people from giving their money to zoos and aquariums and that sort of thing. And actually on October 6th there will be a sit-in uh, the uh, Mayor's Oktoberfest luncheon um, in one of the square, uh, and that will be protesting um, them giving away meat. Uh, KW Animal Safe is part of the safe movement uh, that exists to erect glass walls around slaughterhouses. So, because we believe that if people actually saw what happened to their food before it got on their plate, they would never eat it. They would never eat meat. Um, and so we encourage plant-based uh, living through outreach and we bear witness to the animals uh, during weekly vigils at, at local slaughterhouses. We also support groups in, in neighboring communities doing the same. You may be familiar with the pig trial that's happening right now in Toronto. The woman who founded the Worldwide Safe Movement is on trial right now for giving water to a dehydrated pig, and she faces jail time. Um, and the issue is whether the pig is property or is uh, an individual with her own right to have her physical needs met. We're all love-based groups, all three of us. We believe that we can achieve more through um, peace and then through force to help our, our animal sisters and friends. And also, none of us, with, with the exception of some of the young children in our groups, have been vegan all our lives. So we're not um, here to point fingers at anyone. Um, but we, we want to educate people every day about what they're doing and getting them to think about whether it's peaceful or right. So we're concerned about animal rights. We're also concerned about the Earth's rights, um, as many of you are. There are billions of animals in the world who are raised every year in what's called the meat industry, and they're killing the Earth. Uh, the, the United Nations says that the meat industry creates more greenhouse gases than all of the world's trains planes, cars, and buses combined. And also an unacceptable amount of deforestation uh, happens every year um, to create that, uh, space to grow food to feed animals that, that we eat. Um, the United Nations also says it takes 15,000 liters of water to, create, to produce one kilo of beef. We actually have the ability to grow more than enough food for all of the human animals on Earth. Yet over 3 million children die of starvation every year. And we keep feeding livestock food that could be eaten by human beings. And we want there to be something to leave to the children who don't die of starvation. We want there to be something for our own children and grandchildren and nephews and nieces out there. So we gather to show empathy for the animals and to raise awareness for the injustices. That's what we're doing when we go out, um, what we're doing with the trucks full of pigs and cows and rabbits and turkeys and chickens that are on their way to slaughter. We're raising awareness and we're bearing witness to what they're going through. There's a slaughterhouse up the road here, uh, just outside of Breslau, where they kill 25,000 baby pigs every week. And they're about to double that number to compete with the Burlington Slaughterhouse. So we bear witness to their frightened eyes. We feel the, the softness of, of their snouts. We document the cuts and the bruises on their bodies and see the inability of some to even stand up to receive the last act of love and compassion, possibly the only act of love and compassion of their entire lives. We give them love and we give them water. And then we listen to them scream in pain 
as they're beaten with paddles and zapped with electric prods to get off the trucks so that they can go inside and be gassed and have their throats slit and be cut up so that they can be put on little trays for people to bring home to feed to their families. When Maya, my cat, is purring on my chest at night and looking into my eyes, it's the bright eyes of that baby pig in the middle of the truck that keep coming back to me. The one who was foaming at the mouth from dehydration. The one that I couldn't reach with my water bottle. He, I felt he was a little boy for some reason, was conscious enough to be standing and watching us, but he was unable to reach us and too stunned to try. And he seemed unclear as to what we were doing or why. Why he was standing in the middle of a truck full of overheated pig bodies on a day when it was 35 degrees Celsius outside. Or quite wet fresh air sunlight were because he'd never seen them before in his life. Or why no one had given him water or food in all the time that he'd been on that moving truck, sometimes up to 36 hours. And I don't know why I was born a white middle class woman in a country like Canada where I have rights and privileges that many other human animals recognize and probably envy. And I don't know why Maya was born a loved and coddled cat, an animal that we call a pet in this country with the, rights to not, the right to not be abused or murdered or eaten as she may have been if she'd been born in another country. And I don't know why Little Bright Eyes was born a pig, an animal we call meat in a country where he's considered property. I can't change who Little Bright Eyes is or was, but maybe I can make people understand that he was a cool and not a dead and save some of his sisters and brothers and cousins from the same fate that he experienced. I saw a white educator in the United States, the States ask an audience of hundreds of white people if they would like to be treated the way that black people are being treated in the States. I didn't see one hand raised. And I would like to ask you a similar question. If you would like to be treated the way farm animals are treated and zoo animals are treated and fur animals are treated in this country. Every day in this country, animals are castrated or have their tails amputated without anesthetic. They're imprisoned, many without access to sunlight or rain or fresh air their entire lives. Dairy cows are impregnated once a year or so. <coughs> they call it insemination, I call it rape. And that's in order for them to continue lactating. They're mammals like we are, so they have to, to be um, they have to be pregnant to continue lactating. Um, we buy and sell their friends and family members as commodities, as human slaves once were. All these things are considered legal and normal practices in Canada and in many other countries. There was a time when human slavery was legal. Beating your wife was legal. Residential schools were legal. So we do what we do so that someday we can all put our hands on the earth, our one and only mother, and know that she'll survive us, and look into the eyes of every child and every animal whose future we hold in our hands, and see peace, just peace, and know that we're part of creating it. Thank you for listening.